Okay guys, today we are gonna focus on solving equations with fractions. We're only gonna do the first step, which is if you remember that first question number one was, do I need to clear fractions? So for every single one of these problems, we are going to clear fractions. So for each of these problems, clearing fractions will look a little bit differently. They all have the basic same process, but each problem is individual in its own right. So we're gonna focus on a couple different versions of clearing fractions. So for example one, we have a problem and it looks like this. One half x minus one fourth equals three eighths. Now this is a pretty straightforward problem. It is technically a two-step equation. But in this case, since we're going to clear fractions, it's going to add an extra step for us, but it's going to save us some trouble in the long run. None of us like fractions. We don't want to work with them. So why should we? What we're going to do is we're going to look at the denominators. Since I don't have anything in parentheses, when I do clear fractions, I will have to multiply everything by whatever I choose as my common denominator. So I see that I have a 2, a 4, and an 8. So for my common denominator, I want a number that is as big as my biggest denominator or bigger than all of them. In this case, I notice that 8 is divisible by 8, it is also divisible by 4, and divisible by 2. So the number that I'm going to clear fractions with is a positive 8. And I'm simply going to multiply each term individually by 8. So I have 8 times 1 half x, then 8 times negative 1 fourth, and then finally I have 8 times 3 eighths. Now for some of you, you need to show your work because you need to show those steps. So we're going to draw a line and make sure we show our work out to the right. I'm going to start with that 8 times 1 half. So I have 8 times a positive 1 half. Whenever we're multiplying fractions, we need to make sure that we have both numbers displayed as a fraction and any whole number can be displayed as a fraction by putting it over 1. And then typically what you'll do is you'll multiply straight across. So 8 times 1 is 8. And then 1 times 2 is 2. But in this case, I notice that 8 is divisible by 2. So 8 divided by 2 would be 4. Now I can save you some time with this. You don't actually have to start multiplying right away. Because if you look at your fractions and you look kind of catty corner at the opposite corners, you can reduce. You can never reduce straight across because that's where you're multiplying. And you can only reduce up and down if your fraction isn't simplified already. So if I look here, I notice that 8 and 2 are both divisible by 2. Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. Well, after I simplify by reducing, I notice that I now have a 4 over a 1 and 1 over 1. Well, those are simply the whole numbers 4 and 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. So you can skip this step completely. It can go away. You can skip it as long as you know how to simplify the fractions first. If you don't know how to simplify the fractions first, that's fine. You can just multiply and then simplify afterwards. So in this case, 8 times 1 half is 4. It's basically the same thing as saying 1 half of 8. Now the x is going to carry down because that was attached to that 1 half, so I now have 4x. Then I'm going to multiply 8 times negative 1 fourth. So I have 8 times 1 fourth. In this case, I have a positive times a negative, which will be a negative. And then I'm going to take 1 fourth of 8. And some of you guys, you can do that right off the top of your head and say that's 2. But for some of you, you need to see how we got that. So 8 goes over 1, just like any whole number does. And I notice that 8 and 4 are both divisible by 4. Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. And after I simplify, I notice that I have 2 times 1, which gives me 2. Then here's the hardest one, 8 times 3 eighths. Again, I put 8 over 1. Then I notice that I have 8 on top here and an 8 on bottom over here to the right. 8 and 8 are both divisible by 8, so 8 divided by 8 is 1, and here 8 divided by 8 is 1 as well. Well, then I have 1 over 1 and 3 over 1. That's like saying 1 times 3. Well, 1 times 3 is simply 3. Now I have a two-step equation. Now all I have to do is finish solving for x. We're not going to do that today. All we're doing today is, excuse me, clearing fractions. But in the future, you would take this, finish your seven questions, because we've only done number one, and you would solve. But in this case for today, this is all I wanted you to do, so you would be done. You've cleared your fractions, and you can move on. 
Then we move on to an example like number two. Example two gives me the equation one half times the quantity P plus 23 equals two thirds times the quantity P minus one. Well, this is the same process. I'm gonna clear fractions, that first step. In this case, I notice I have two fractions. They're both outside of parentheses. Since the fractions are on the outside and not the inside, I'm gonna start by multiplying by something to clear those fractions, just like we did up here. In this case, I have the denominator of two and three. Well, two and three are not divisible by each other, but there is a number they have in common, and that would be six. So I'm gonna multiply both of those equations by six. Now this time when I multiply, I'm not gonna multiply every single term. I'm only gonna multiply what's on the outside. The reason for that is just like PEMDAS, this is like saying I have three things multiplied. A times B times C. According to PEMDAS, whenever you're multiplying, you always start and move left to right. So you would multiply A times B first, then you would multiply times C. Well in this case, my A is a six. My B in, over here is one half. And my C would be that entire term, P plus 23. So when I go to multiply, I don't have to multiply six times anything inside here, because for the first step, all I'm gonna do is multiply six times the one half. And I'm gonna clear that fraction, and I'll get a new number on the outside. Then I can multiply that into the parentheses to see what we get. So in this case, we're gonna say six times one half, which is one half of six. And if any of you figured it out, one half of six is three. The P plus 23 did not change. All we have to do is carry it down to the next step. Over here as well, P minus one will not change. So we'll carry that down to the next step. And then I have six times two thirds. Well, some of you are gonna need to show that work. So let's do that math out to the right. Six times two over three. So I put six over one. And I notice that I have a six and a three that are catty corner from each other. And six and three are both divisible by three. So three becomes a one and six becomes a two because Six divided by three is two. Now I have two times two. Well, two times two is four. And then after you would clear your fractions, at this point you would distribute the three into these parentheses and the four into this set of parentheses. But in this case, again, all we're doing is clearing fractions, so you're done with this step. We're not actually gonna finish solving the equation today. Okay, let's do a couple more examples. Example three looks like six times the quantity one third x minus one half equals five times the quantity negative two fifths plus one tenth x. Oops, that went a little too low. Let me correct that for you guys. Okay, in this case, my fractions are inside my parentheses. So what you do is you notice if the author chose a factor to multiply by. In this case, they did. They chose six over here and five over here. So anytime you have fractions inside parentheses, what you're gonna do is distribute first. Distribute whatever's on the outside first to see if it'll clear the fractions for you. If it does, fantastic. If it doesn't, then you go back and you regroup and you decide what you need to do to clear fractions. So we're gonna start over here with the six and we're gonna distribute six times one third x. That's like saying one third of six, which is two. So I have two x. Then I have six times negative one half. Well, a positive times a negative is a negative, and one half of six is three. On the left-hand side of the equal sign, it cleared fractions for me. I'm done there. I don't have to clear any more fractions over here. So I'm gonna move over to the, excuse me, right-hand side of the equal sign. So I have five times negative two fifths. Well, positive times a negative is a negative. Then I have five times two fifths. I notice that I have a five on top and a five on bottom. They'll cancel and I'm left with one times two, which will give me two. And that cleared, that looks really good. Then I have five times a positive one tenth X. Well, a positive times a positive is a positive and I have five times one tenth. If I do that math out to the right, you'll notice that I have five over one times one over 10. I can simplify and say that five is one and 10 is two. But in this case, I have one times one on top and one times two on bottom. I'm still left with the fraction one half in front of X. So I did not complete, completely clear fractions on the right. In this case, they did not pick a good number for me to clear fractions with. So all I have to do now is look at the one fraction that I have left over. I notice it's a one half. So to clear a two on bottom, if that's the only number I have, I'll simply multiply every term by two. 
and that'll clear my fraction for me. Oops, let me do that underneath, guys, so that y'all can see it. 2 times 1 half x, 2 times negative 2, 2 times negative 3, and 2 times 2x. So let's do that multiplication. 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 12. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And 2 times 1 half x. 1 half of 2 is 1, which is what we wanted to happen. We wanted to clear that 1 half. So I'll have positive 1x left over. You don't have to show the 1. You can just write x. And you're done with that step. Make sure you're always boxing your answers. Okay, last example. Example 4. Example 4 gives me the equation 1 third equals the quantity 2 plus 4z divided by 5. In this case, that quantity 2 plus 4z can actually be rewritten. All I have to do is put parentheses around 2 plus 4z because the whole thing is on top of the 5. And I can rewrite that as 1 fifth times the quantity 2 plus 4z. This way it just makes it a little bit easier to see where your fraction is so that you can clear it. I notice that I have a 3 and a 5 and the common denominator between 3 and 5 is going to be 15. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equal sign by 15. On the left hand side of the equal sign I have 15 times 1 third. That's like saying 1 third of 15 and 1 third of 15 is 5. On the right hand side, this is just like that example up here at the top where we had a times b times c. So I'm going to multiply 15 times 1 fifth first and I get 1 fifth of 15 which is 3 and the 2 plus 4z will just carry down because it's not going to change yet. We'll distribute next. But at this point we are actually done with this example because we've cleared the fraction completely and we can make sure we box our answer and move on.